Well, hello and welcome to another video lesson. Uh, today we're going to be discussing section 6-5, which is on translations of the sine and cosine functions. This is the second set of transformations that we will be looking at, and then we will be moving on to other kinds of trig functions and see how these same transformations affect them. So today we're going to be looking at transformations that involve translations, either horizontal or vertical translations. If you recall from our previous work with transformations, we get these sorts of translations by adding or subtracting values either to the function or to the argument of the function. So let's begin first off by looking at vertical translations. Vertical translations have a, a basic pattern to them. We're simply adding a value on to the function. So the transformation looks something like this. We take our original function f of x, and we transform it by adding some constant a on to the function. And this gives rise to a vertical translation of a units. This is old news for us, but we can see the effect that it has on our new trig functions um, and come to understand how, how this change will affect our graphs as well. This is very straightforward, sort of like our previous lesson. There's one very straightforward transformation and one that's a little bit more complicated. In this particular case, the vertical translation is a little bit easier for us to work with. If we take a look at our example here, let's observe what happens if we take f of x is equal to sine of x plus 2. And let's observe what the graph of this particular function looks like. We can start with our traditional axis here. And again, as always, I'm going to start by showing us what the original function, the parent function, looks like. In this particular case, that's just sine of x. And sine of x does something like something like this. One period in 2 pi and has zeros at 0 pi and 2 pi. Now if you think about what happens with our added value here, this plus 2, what it does is it says our y values, our function values, are what they would have been with the sine function except that they're increased here by 2. So every value, wherever it is, simply gets shifted up 2 units. That's very easy for a point, say, like the origin here, this point gets shifted up two units to become this point of 0 comma 2. At pi comma 0, that gets shifted up vertically two units to be the point pi comma 2. And again, at 2 pi, we are shifted up two units. If we look at a point here like pi over 2 comma 1, when this gets shifted up two units vertically, that will go up to a value of 3. And at 3 pi over 2, when we have a y value of minus 1, that will shift down here to, to this particular value here. So we can see what our new function is going to look like. This transformation simply takes our original graph and shifts it up two units. That's exactly what we expected to have happen, and we get to see this confirmation here that this is, that this is what happens. The same thing is true for cosine. Um, we can look at negative values as well. So let's take a look at a cosine value where we, where we do a vertical translation in the negative direction. So our next example here, let's look at f of x is equal to the cosine. And let's go ahead and add in a change in period here as well, just to keep ourselves sharp with that. The cosine of 2x minus 1. Okay, so again, we want to explore this graph and all of the transformations on it. So again, we'll look at our interval from 0 to 2 pi. And we'll begin by starting with just the, the parent graph, just the cosine of x. Cosine of x, recall, has a behavior passing through these points here. So we can draw our smooth, our smooth curve here. Here's our cosine of x graph. 
And now we can do these translations and, and, and period shifts in either order. We can, we can decide whichever one is going to be more convenient for us. Let's first of all focus on the period. The period of our new function, recall, is 2 pi divided by k, where this is our k value here. And so we simply end up with a new period for this function of pi. So this is a compression by a factor of, of 2, or, or we, we divide every x value by 2. So our new function will do something like this. It will have to repeat itself here in the space of, of 1 pi rather than in the space of 2 pi. So let's sketch this out. This would be the graph now of the cosine of 2x. And the last piece of our transformation, the last uh, effect we can do to our graph is to shift it down one unit. So every, every point now on the, on the red curve gets shifted down one unit. So this becomes a fairly easy graph to, to manage. And we see that we get a very similar pattern here to what we had before. So our transformed graph now looks like this. And this now is our function y equals the cosine of 2x minus 1. So these are vertical translations and they're relatively easy to work with. They're, they're just as simple as the amplitude. However, when we start to do our horizontal translations, things get a little bit more complicated. Um, in fact, horizontal tra translations of trig functions are called phase shifts. In essence, they are called phase shifts because they affect the, the basically the starting point of our periodic functions. Recall that sines and cosines are periodic functions and so if we shift them left or right they still look generally the same. However, where they start their oscillations at when x equals zero um, becomes, becomes the, the issue here when we do phase shifts. So recall that horizontal trans translations are a transformation where we take our function f of x and we change it by adding a units on to our, our x value. And a good way to think about this, before we summarize what this does, a good way to think about this is that whatever the original function did at x, our function is going to do at x minus a. Think about why that has to be x minus a. If I put x minus a in here, I get exactly the same thing as if I put x in here, so they'll behave the same. And this is that, that confusing issue with horizontal transformations where they always seem to do the opposite. They always seem to have the opposite effect of what we would predict. So this is a horizontal translation by minus a units or by negative a units. So a positive value added on to our x will shift our graph left. And a negative value, a value subtracted from x, will shift our graph to the right. Once we start putting all of these transformations together, things will get complicated and we'll have to think carefully about the way things look. But for now, let's just focus on, on one simple thing. Let's look at just a, a pure um, phase shift, just a pure horizontal translation. So let's take a look at what we might expect if we had, for example, f of x is equal to the cosine of x plus pi. This is a good place for us to start. Frequently for us, because we're doing all of our graphing in uh, radians, we will often see that the phase shift here will be in some multiple or fraction of pi, and that just allows us to coordinate things a little bit better with our graphs. So again, we're going to start with our traditional interval here, and we're going to begin by constructing the parent function here. So we'll just take a look at the cosine of x. The cosine of x will look something like this. And there are several ways that you can approach this transformation. We, we can start to think now a little bit about what happens with, with various values. So for example, if I were to plug 0 in, to the function 
cosine of x plus pi, if I were to plug 0 in for x, the effect would be that I would be evaluating the cosine of pi. Well, the cosine of pi is down here at minus 1. So when I plug an x value of 0 in, I will get out actually negative 1. You can see that this particular point here has shifted horizontally um, by pi units. And that's exactly what we expected to have happen. If I were to plug in 2 pi, if I were to plug in 2 pi, if I were to plug in pi, you can see that if I plug pi into our, our function cosine of x plus pi, that what I'll be evaluating here is the cosine of pi plus pi, the cosine of 2 pi. Well, the cosine of 2 pi is 1, which means that this point will show up on the graph here now. And again, you can see that that is a, that is a horizontal translation to the left by pi units. So we can see that we have a very similar graph to the graph we had before. However, it's going to look a little bit different. Notice that our, our zero here at 3 pi over 2 will get moved to this spot, which already was a zero. That has to do with the fact that we shifted our graph by pi units and the period of cosine is 2 pi. So there's an interplay, there's an interrelationship here between our period and the phase shift we get. And we're going to see that in just a moment when we start to combine the two. But the graph of the cosine of x plus pi will be a function that looks like this. So here is the cosine of x plus pi. We can look at other graphs as well. Let's do a further example and take a look at the sine of x minus the pi minus pi over 3. So here now we have a function, um, a sine function, and the shift will be a shift to the right, but it will be a shift by pi over 3 units. And I want to talk to you a little bit about how to handle this because oftentimes we'll find that we have shifts that are not necessarily nice values of pi for us to work with. To start with, let me graph our parent function here. This is simply the graph of the sine of x. And now let's go through and think about pi over 3. And let's more importantly think about where pi over 3 is. When you're faced with a shift by a fractional amount, and it's not something that's clearly already labeled in your graph, you want to be able to sort of adjust that. And the best thing to do is to think here, since we have a, a phase shift of pi over 3 units to the right, I'm going to look at what happens to this point in the origin, and everything else will follow from this particular point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this interval from 0 to pi, and I'm going to divide it up into 3, right? We're interested in, in fractions of, of pi that are 1 third, 2 third, those, those sorts. So normally we divide that up into pi over 2. Here I'm going to be more interested um, in dividing it up into pi over 3. So, so this may be pi over 3 here, 2 pi over 3, so on and so forth. So what's going to happen now is our zero is going to occur here, right? This point is going to shift over pi over three units. We can do the same thing here. We can, we can break this up into pi over three. This point will shift over to here. And so we can start to see, we can start to see a pattern. Now we won't be able to necessarily come up with a whole graph, but we can, we can definitely come up with a, with a sketch just by just by plotting a few points, thinking about the, the way in which a few points would shift. So this is a fair representation of the graph of the sine of x minus pi over 3. 